Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. That's old school style by the way. I'm excited today because I've got a snake here, a new snake addition to the Reptarium that I haven't had in quite some time. I used to breed these guys years ago. It's probably been 10 or 12 years since I've had them and they've always been one of my favorite animals. Now there's actually a genus called Old Three Ophis and then a species called Tinnieris, which are all the beauty snakes. Well, this happens to be what they would call a Ridleyi, so Orthrophis Tinnieris Ridleyi, and these guys are what they would call cave dwelling rats snakes. These will literally live in caves in Thailand and Malaysia and are just such an absolutely beautiful snake. Again, when I was kind of coming up in the reptiles all those years ago, this was like a dream animal. No one was working with them. No one was breeding them. And then when they started to get bred, I was able to buy some captive bred ones and raise them up. And then we bred them for several years. They are just absolutely amazing. So a friend of mine actually had a few snakes that he was like, hey, I need to donate these to the reptarium. Would you take them? I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, look at how beautiful that snake is. And just think about that. These guys live deep in the caves of Thailand and Malaysia, typically eating bats and sometimes other rodents. Now they will adventure out of caves from time to time, but they are a cave dwelling rat snake. These things are absolutely incredible. But again, beauty snakes are pretty cool and we have a handful of them. Sticking with beauty snakes, and this guy looks like he's a little feisty monkey. The truth is it's typically pretty docile. Now this is actually what they would call a Taiwan beauty snake. And this is the largest of the beauty snakes. And this would be an Orthrophis tinnieris freezii. And again, these guys can get like nine foot in length and come from Taiwan, obviously. Really amazing animals. I mean, all the beauty snakes are incredible. And I hate to say it, I have one other beauty snake that uh, isn't very easy to handle. And that snake, of course, is my guy Jimmy here, which is the albino Chinese beauty snake but it loves to bite. As a matter of fact, this is probably the first time I've ever taken it out of its enclosure and not been bitten by it, to be honest with you. And again, this is the Chinese beauties. They don't get quite as large as the Taiwan, but they do get larger than the cave dwellers. And these are the Othriophis tinnieris tinnieris. So this is basically the species that carries the both the tinnieris. And look at this little monkey here. Hoo-hoo, doggy. I tell you what, he's got me wrapped really well. And oh, I'm in trouble now. There's no way out, guys. There's no way out. I'm, I'm just, ah! <laughs> He's got me so wrapped up. There is no way I'm getting out of this without a bite. Don't do it, Jimmy. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Let me go. Let me go, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh my gosh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> He's such a radical animal, and I literally can't get him off my hand. He is just so wrapped around my arm right now. Okay, I got one. Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta let him go up. Oh, now I'm in trouble. There's literally zero chance of me getting away with this. Ah! Come on, Jimmy. Let go, buddy. Why are you so upset all the time? Uh, oh, oh, I got the goosebumps. Whenever you got a snake on you, you know it's gonna bite. You get the little snake goosebumps. Uh, okay, okay, Jimmy. It's a beautiful snake. I think I got away without getting bitten. That is absolutely amazing. So that's all the beauty snakes that we work with. There's a whole bunch of different other ones that we don't work with, but absolutely wonderful snakes. Hey, I want to know if you guys could help me a little bit. I'm going to be down in Nashville here in about a week or so just for a podcast that I'm doing. It's going to be exciting. Can't wait to share with you what that's all about. But I need to find someone in Nashville that has a cool collection that I'd like to film at. So if you guys know anyone in the Nashville, Tennessee area that has cool reptiles that wouldn't mind me coming over, put it down in the comments or reach out to us over at the B. HB Reptile site, or you can hit Jay Tomsky up on his Instagram. Let me know. Uh, I want to film something when I'm out there, and I can't wait to tell you what I'm going out there to do. Jay's doing a little sloth encounter here. <laughs> And then another snake we got is a really cool snake to be totally honest with you. These are called black pine snakes. Now years ago, black pines were relatively common in the pet trade because they are being bred relatively commonly, but now they're actually endangered. These guys come from the Southeast part of the United States and they are on the Endangered Species Act. Luckily my friend Ben that donated these animals to us was actually right down the road here in Michigan. So basically what it is is when an animal's on the Endangered Species Act, it's illegal to get it across state lines. But as long as you're within the state, you can actually 
actually own them, right? So this black pine's been in Michigan for years before it was on the Endangered Species Act. So it's pretty cool that we're able to get one. Unfortunately, this is a boy and we can't get another female unless I can find someone in Michigan. So we're not able to really breed them. The truth is, I don't know that I'd want to breed them anyways, because if I did, I wouldn't be able to get rid of them out of the state lines. I could only get rid of them here in Michigan. There's probably not that much of a demand in Michigan for black pine snakes. Nevertheless, it's still cool to work with an animal like this. It's a great way to teach people about animals that are endangered as well and what that means when an animal goes on the Endangered Species Act. So this animal will eventually move over to the Reptarium and be a great education ambassador. And then the last snake that my buddy donated to us was another albino Burmese python. Now you know we have a few Burmese pythons that are coming up but we need another albino berm other than sunrise. The thing that's nice about this is it's a male. Now males can still get big but typically a lot of times they'll stay like 10, 11 foot. Honestly sunrise is getting so large now it's getting hard harder and harder to actually handle her. Don't get me wrong, I want to have a giant albino Burmese python because it'll be really cool to have three, four, five people holding it. But I also want a smaller one. Now this one's a little bit smaller than what I want, but I wouldn't mind when this gets eight or nine foot, a little bit bigger than Jeffrey, it'll be a great animal as an animal ambassador. And like I told you guys, we're trying to kind of build up a new collection of animals that would go just for our zoo to you stuff, the stuff like school events, birthday parties and stuff like that. So we don't have to take animals out of the Reptarium. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that quarantine, you know, the stress of the animals, all that type of stuff. So we want to have a bunch of animals like albino berms and all the ambassador animals that are basically down here in the toad ranch enclosures that are going to go along this entire wall here that can have them. So this is a great addition, super cool, super tame albino Burmese python that here in another probably year will be that eight to 10 foot giant snake that isn't so giant that you can handle it and a great animal to take out as an animal ambassador. One of my favorite things when I was a kid was eating cereal, but of course now as I'm adult, I realize that it's just full of sugar. I've been trying to cut down on carbs, sugar, unhealthy food, and basically it feels like I can't eat anything, right? Well now because of Magic Spoon, guess what? I can eat cereal again. Mm. And with 14 grams of protein, only four grams of net carbs, and 140 calories, I tell you what, I can afford to eat this. And now you can try their four flavored variety pack with cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Absolutely delicious. Mm, I don't know what, mm, it's crazy. It's just like when I was a kid, but in this case, it actually is nutritious for you. That is actually amazing. By the way, it's also keto friendly. And they don't just have those flavors. Believe it or not, they have several other flavors that are absolutely incredible as well. Mmm, so good. I can't believe I'm eating something that's healthy for me. Click the link below and you can get your variety pack. And at checkout, make sure to use the promo code BRIANB and save $5. Or you can go to magicspoon.com slash BRIANB and get $5 off your order. What do you think? You want some? Oh, okay, I'm going to eat them anyway. Magicspoon.com slash Brian B. And sticking with new snakes, guess what? Another thing for me to unbox. Actually, my buddy Warren from South Africa lives here in the States now, actually produces a bunch of cool animals. That's where I got the house snakes and stuff like that. Well, he just asked me, hey, would you take a shipment of some ball pythons that he produced? Didn't tell me what they were. He just said, hey, I think there's about 20 or so ball pythons. Would you take them? I said, sure, why not, right? I know he's a great guy. His animals are absolutely impeccable. So I decided might as well go ahead and, uh, and take them. So I don't know what we're gonna have here, but it's going to be pretty fun to unbox and just see what we have. We have ties. Thank you, Warren, for not sending zip ties. I appreciate you very much. So uh, let's go ahead and, and see what bag number is. We're, we're going to be surprised together, guys. So I have no idea what is going to be. Let's see. Maybe I'll just try to take them out and see what they are. And then uh, I'll look at the bag afterwards. You know, kind of that guess. So I'm not looking at what is in here. So what do we have here? Looks like we have a little super pastel here. Looks like we have an Enchi. Looks like we have maybe an Enchi pastel right here. This kind of reminds me, this is either a really pretty pastel or it's an Enchi pastel. Definitely, so we have a super pastel. Definitely have, this little one's definitely an Enchi right here. Again, another little Enchi right there. Looks like a normal ball python. So let's see how close I was here. Look at this, two Enchi, an Enchi pastel, a super pastel and normal. Oh my gosh, I think, I think I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna probably fail from here on out. But that was pretty good guessing, I tell you what. And I promise you, I didn't look at the bag. So we're gonna keep doing this throughout the whole shipment. And uh, you guys can guess along with me too, right? You know, go down in the comments, let me know what you think these animals are as I'm unpacking them. Don't you take a peek at the bag either. So let's go ahead and get this. Gosh, he ties them perfectly, you know, real easy. Listen, this is a little thing for me. You know, I know you don't want snakes to get out when you're shipping them, but you don't have to pack them like it's Fort Knox, where you need 25 people to open a bag. So 
All right, I'm done ranting about that. Let's see what we have here. Looks like we have two spiders and a pastel. So yeah, it looks like just two spiders. It's kind of interesting. This one has a little paradox spot on it, which is kind of cool, but I don't think there's anything else. I think there's just two spider ball pythons and a pastel. Let's see what we got. Two spiders, one aberrant pattern normal. He said aberrant pattern normal. That looks like a pastel to me. Kind of, kind of, kind of an uglier pastel to be totally honest with you, but probably a pastel. See what that looks like and go from there. But nevertheless, still pretty good on my guessing so far, but I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. These are pretty easy to guess. I think most people can guess them. If they start getting into multiple gene animals, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult. Again, don't know what he sent me, have no idea. And I don't mind if they're a bunch of kind of more normally animals, those entry level animals, because you know what? That's really good. I want people to be able to buy those entry level animals because they're just as good as the other ones, right? I mean, a cool spider is just as cool as anything. So you don't have to have a five or six or seven gene animal to have a cool snake, if you know what I mean. So I don't mind. And so far I'm happy with what I've got. This ain't no baby. That's a big old normal ball python right there. That's a that's definitely a yearling there. That's that wasn't that's one big egg if that just hatched. Let's see what we have. We have a, a what he called the Dinker project. So what happens a lot of times people call them Dinkers, and I see what he's saying. There's like really high white in this animal. It's really kind of a pretty animal. And sometimes people will keep these animals. They call them Dinker projects, and they just kind of dink around with them, right? You know, see like, hey, will this potentially prove out, or will it not prove out? Stuff like that. But uh, again, pretty much just a pretty normal to be honest with you. Okay, let's what we got here. I'm going to take a look real quick. These are actually really pretty though. So these are definitely spiders, but they look like reduced spiders. They might be spider enchies, so what they would call stinger bees. We definitely have some yellow bellies here, right there. You can see that kind of pattern on their belly. Not all yellow bellies are yellow, but they always have that kind of flaming on the sides. So we definitely have a bunch of yellow bellies. Looks like right here, we actually have an enchi yellow belly right here. This looks like enchi and yellow belly both. This also looks like an enchi yellow bellies too. Those are both incomplete dominant. So I think we have a couple stinger bees, some yellow bellies and enchi yellow bellies. Let's take a look and see what we have. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see, we have a yellow belly. He says spider time too. And that's the thing, I'll be totally honest with you. These are some really interesting looking spiders, but I was kind of thinking they didn't look like entries because their head pattern is kind of like normal. So they're really just really beautiful spiders. And then of course, two entry yellow belly. So, so far I've been getting it pretty darn close. All right, we're gonna go, you know, I've been doing pretty good here. So I decided I was gonna bring Mike in and uh, if he gets it wrong, he has to put a spider in his mouth. No, that's not true. Actually, I think what we have to do is, uh, can you do a cartwheel? No, I can't do a cartwheel. You can't do a cartwheel? No. Get, step on over. Oh, these are easy. All right, ready? What's this one? Pastel. That's right, he got it, it's a pastel. Did you look at this? No. Okay. I so, just know from the last time I messed it up. How about this one? This also looks like a pastel, but it looks like it's got something else in it. So far as right, actually these three here are basically the same. This will give you the trick to what's in this one. Do you know what this one is? Kind of looks like a Mojave maybe? No, it's a no. ghost out. So pastel ghost. Pastel ghost. So good job. So uh, that's all the snakes. We did good. Mikey did good. Uh, now let's go do some caught for wheels. I know you guys know that I've been breeding big snakes for a long, long time. Now I haven't in the last couple years, but really my career started breeding big snakes. So I read them very well, right? And of course, Gemma, here has not been on food since we got her. Now I know she ate literally just before we got her because when we got her, she took a big old poop. And so I know she was eating and feeding really well. Well, I tell you what, I think I've solved the reason why she hasn't been feeding. And that's because she needs to be bred. And you may see that Night Fury is actually in the clay. It's pretty exciting, guys. We've got Night Fury in here. Now he's done some courting. We just put him in a little bit ago. Hasn't bred yet. But the thing is, is that sure enough, I start to see her body distend right it's like a pre ovulation or follicle growth it's uh just kind of something that happens with big snakes so that's why she was off of food is she's actually creating follicles and she needs to get bred so we decided that night fairy would be an amazing animal to breed her to again she's a ghost animal and he of course is a motley golden child could make some incredible babies now i wasn't planning on breeding big snakes i'm going to be honest with you but the fact is is that she's going to probably lay slugs if i don't breed her so i figured what the heck let's put night fairy in there and maybe we're going to get some babies that would be absolutely incredible so i'll keep you guys updated on the progress but i think i at least solved the mystery of why Gemma wasn't eating.
And to be totally honest with you, I think my girl Lucy is the exact same way. She's been off food now for the last like five or six weeks. Whoa, she's coming at me. She's not, what are you doing, Lucy? Oh my gosh, she seems like she's a little bit crazy right now. She's had interest in food, but she hasn't taken food. Now she's actually laid in fertile clutches a couple times in the past. So I think that it's possible she could be in a pre-ovulation as well. I am not gonna breed Lucy because remember last time I bred her, she actually bound up with some eggs and I was really concerned about her. So I'm just gonna let her go through the cycle and hopefully she doesn't lay a clutch of infertile eggs and just goes back to food. But nevertheless, I'm pretty sure she has the same thing going on. Again, that kind of happens. When one animal cycles, sometimes other animals cycle as well. So I think that is the problem with Lucy as well. So uh, at least that's a good thing. At least nothing is wrong. They're just going through the natural cycles. Today we are gonna be playing with our boy Beetlejuice in the spirit of Halloween. Yeah! Well, let's get him on the ground and actually yeah. be kind of like his, uh, his like, his safety. So his just let, let, if he wants to hide under your legs, sure, but make sure you shield him from going past you. Good job, Beetlejuice. There you go. There you go. There we go. Good Look at how beautiful. I love him so much. He's still a little baby boy. Yeah, he's still got a lot of growing to do, man. And man, he's going to be so cool when he gets bigger, too. Oh, sh**. He's <laughs> so acrobatic every time. Highest, highest points are the best points. Just give me your head a hug. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, hit a playlist for me. It would help me out a lot. You know what else would help me out? You subscribing to this channel right over here. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.